Med school applicants, it's now the day after Christmas. Are your dreams of med school acceptance this application cycle toast if you don't yet have an interview invitation? There's this meme out there that if you don't have one by Thanksgiving, you can forget about it. You're going to get rejected. Well, let's hear what several admissions directors have to say when asked, when does your school stop sending out interview invitations? The answer may stop you from hitting the panic button. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 555th episode of Admission Straight Talk. Thanks for tuning in. I also want to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy new year, a year filled with acceptances and personal, academic, and professional growth. This episode is for those of you who applied this cycle to medical school and haven't received any interview invitations, or at least haven't received an interview invitation from your top choice schools. We're also going to discuss a little bit about what you should be doing now, not hitting the panic button, not just worrying and chewing your nails, which is preparing for the possibility of a reapplication. So I have two free resources that I'd like to invite you to, to take advantage of. The first one is the ultimate guide to medical school interview success, which you can access at accepted.com slash 555IV. Again, the ultimate guide to medical school interview success can be accessed at exhibit.com slash 555IV. And the second one is the medical school reapplicant advice, six tips for success, which you can download from exhibit.com slash 555REAPP, R-E-A-P-P. Again, uh, medical school reapplicant advice, six tips for success. You can download that from exhibit.com slash 555REAPP. Hopefully you get invited to an interview, in which case you really want the guide to interview success. And if you don't get an acceptance following the interview, you will be considering reapplication. However, I have said many times, many, 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 many times, that med school applicants need to start preparing for the possibility of reapplication long before they know the final outcome of an application cycle. We'll get into that later. In the meantime, Take advantage of these free offers and download the free guides from accepted.com slash 555IV and accepted.com slash 555REAP. If you are a regular listener, you know that during most episodes of Mission Straight Talk, I interview a guest. Occasionally I give a solo show, but usually I interview a guest. And frequently that guest is in admissions directors. I also have many times asked guests who are med school admissions deans or directors, when do you stop sending out interview invitations? I started asking this question because many applicants believed incorrectly that if they don't have an interview invitation by Thanksgiving, they are toast. And here we are in the midst of the Christmas and New Year holidays. And if you haven't gotten the invitation by now, are you actually burnt toast? Well, let's hear what five admissions deans and directors have said in response to my question. The five are Dr. Rashini Pinto-Powell, the Associate Dean for Admissions at Dartmouth Geisel School of Medicine, Paul White, Assistant Dean for Admissions at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, Dr. Kristen Goodell, Associate Dean of Admissions at BU's Chobanian and Avedisian School of Medicine, Dr. Michael Ellison, Associate Dean for Admissions at Chicago Medical School at the Rosalind Franklin University, and Dr. Cynthia Boyd, Associate Dean for Admissions Recruitment at Rush Medical College. Today's episode is a collection of their answers to that question with a little commentary from me at the end, but mostly it's admissions directors in their own words these are admissions directors at top medical programs sharing what you need to know about the interview invitation timeline. Okay, let's start with Dr. Pinto Powell from Dartmouth Geisel. When does Geisel typically stop sending out interview invitations? Because there's this thing out there, which I've been fighting desperately, that if you don't have an interview invitation by Thanksgiving, you're toast. And oh every God. single, every single admissions director I've ever spoken with says that's absolute nonsense. So it is when nonsense. do you when do you stop sending out invitations? So we our process is a rolling process, rolling admission. So okay. we continue to send out invitations. Well into March? Yes. Early March. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good yes. to know. 
And and similarly, you know, with the wait list, that's another thing that people worry about. This is a long process, which is why I said I feel sorry for our candidates. It's a long year. It's a long year. Oh, yeah. And what does Johns Hopkins' Paul White have to say on the topic? Well, you know, when it was in person, probably the last date would be the last, excuse me, the first week in February. With virtual, we can we literally sometimes invite people three or four days before the interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would say so, at least a week before is ideal. So mid mid late February would be the late mid, the latest. Mid mid February to late yeah. February. Then, certainly not the day before. Yeah, we want to get right. it up. But when it was in person, because of travel and so forth, we always get minimally two weeks in advance. Right. Yeah. The reason I ask this question is because there's this meme out there that if you don't have an interview invitation by Thanksgiving, you're toast. And every single admissions director I've asked says, no, we interview yeah. into January, February, and some into late March. I don't March, think anybody goes yeah. into April. So I always ask this question and I, you know, and that's, that's why. Do you know where that's coming wrong. from? But Linda, do you know where that's coming from? There are some I, schools. Yeah. It, yeah. Go, go ahead. There's okay, go ahead. Medical schools. I think we're partly to blame, but I also yeah. think that uh, there's a myth out there that yeah. it's best to get your application in as quickly as possible. I know of one really fine medical school that will even tell their fellow applicants, get it in as soon as possible. And they've done a statistical analysis to show that the acceptance rate is higher for people who apply earlier to that medical school. Now, what I would want to know is what's the profile of those students then? You see? Because yeah. in our experience, first of all, we wait for the verified AMFAS application. Of course. Which we won't get until tomorrow. Right. June right. 30th. That's the right. first day. And we will not look at it, trust me. And we don't pre-screen. But sometime <laughs> after July 4th, we will start delivering access, acknowledging and then providing access to our secondary application. You can take however much time you want to get it in, as long as it's in my office by November 1st. Right. Really? Doesn't yes. matter to you. It doesn't matter okay. to me. I do not read anything into it. If someone waits until September, there I figure there's a reason for it. And should some people wait? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'm talking about someone who is having an incredible summer experience like the students I just spoke with. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to write that. We don't take updates. Right, right. We're serious right. About that. I don't want an update. Right. I want to know what you're doing, what you've done. Okay. And if you get invited to interview for Hopkins, I'm just talking about Hopkins. Right, right, right. Then you can provide an update after the interview. Okay. Okay. But before that, so if you, if there's for any reason, uh, you're having an incredible summer experience, which I hope our summer internship program is for these students, and you want to write about it knowledgeably, <laughs> you know, then wait. Yeah. There's no disadvantage. Uh, we notify students if you've been to my website, you'll we, we see that we say we notify students mid December, end of January, and end of March. You know, I once heard or read on one of those, you know, studentdoctor.net or interview feedback, one of the things, it, I think they're, they've been combined now, but someone said uh, if you're interviewing in January or February, you're interviewing for the wait list. Well, that's new, that was news to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why bother, right? Why right. would we bother? To, why would to you invest interview? in the interview? Why would you invest exactly. in the interview? And why would a student invest in it as well? Right. And instead, some of our most interesting students, we don't get to their applications until, in terms of the review, until December and January. And I'm like, this is great. Wow, let's bring right. this person in. And we, we don't want anyone to lose interest in us. And don't take that as, a, as, a, as an indication of unlikely to be admitted. Some of our best applicants were taken in the last month. Fascinating. Absolutely wonderful people. Dr. Kristen Goodell from BU's Trebanian and Abadisian School of Medicine sounds a similar note. End of January, beginning of February. We extended okay. our interview season last year. So we historically had stopped at the end of January. And then last year, I wanted to do some more interviews. And so we extended it a bit. So then we were sending out invitations later. This year, we're planning to have our last interview day be uh, February 16th. So I think we'll be done sending invitations by end of January. But when I say end of January, I mean like January 31st. We have, since they're virtual, if we have a cancellation, we'll reach out to somebody. Okay. Okay, great. Even the reason I asked this question, I, I probably asked it last time we spoke too, but the reason I asked this question is because there's this meme out there that if you don't have an interview invitation by Thanksgiving, 
you're toast. You're not going to get an interview invitation. And I have asked this question of every single medical school admissions director that I've spoken with or Dean, they all give later dates. Yeah. Totally. And this thing is still out there. It's wrong. I don't know. I would. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. So I just keep asking and I keep getting the answers that show it's wrong. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Ellison of Chicago Medical adds his thoughts. Our deadline date for um, you submitting, a student submitting their primary application is November 1st, followed by a December 1st deadline for their supplemental. We invite applicants as late as March to interview. So, you know, we hope that students are applying early in the cycle, but for yeah. the student who may have had some challenges getting their resources together or, or com getting enough people to write them letters of recommendation, we know that things happen that prevent people from always um, submitting an application at the beginning of the cycle. So, you know, if you complete an application by November 1st, you, there is still a possibility that you will could be invited for an interview. We are on rolling admissions. Okay. Dr. Cynthia Boyd from Rush Medical makes it unanimous with our closing clip. We interview usually up until the first to third week in, in February. So again, as I said, it's a rolling admissions. And what that means is we're, we're, we're interviewing people and the, the, the committee is making decisions whether to, you know, accept or not accept, or they might end up on the wait list. So we interview until we fill our class. So that's why it's a rolling admissions, ongoing review, interviews, and uh, some schools may have different, you know, deadlines or whatever. Uh, some fill their class maybe quicker because they have a smaller denominator of what they're looking for. But we definitely, um, if you haven't heard anything, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to get an interview. Now, these are just a sample of the answers I've gotten when I asked, when do you stop sending out interview invitations? However, the reality is that I've asked this question many times and not one admissions dean or director has said that Thanksgiving is when they stop sending out interview invitations. In fact, I don't remember anyone saying that they stop in December. So you don't have to hit the panic button if you do not yet have an interview invitation. Number one, it wouldn't do you any good. It won't matter. Hitting the panic button, biting your nails, not sleeping, um, worrying, having anxiety attacks, none of that will do any good because you still can get an interview invitation and it won't also help you in event that you have to reapply. So what you should be doing now is not sitting on your hands at this point or any of those other uh, behaviors I was just mentioning. What you should be doing, you should pursue parallel tracks. Parallel tracks that enhance your chances of acceptance this time, this time around, and also will enhance your chances of acceptance if you do need to reapply. There's some overlap between the two tracks, but I'm gonna treat them separately. Track number one, do everything you can do to get accepted this cycle. And what do I mean by that? Because you already have submitted your primary and your secondary applications and you are waiting for results. All right, let me tell you. Number one, Try to mitigate weaknesses that you have in your application so that you can discuss in any interview how you are an even better applicant, new and improved than you were when you submitted your primary and secondaries and got their attention and enough interest to warrant the interview invitation. These mitigation efforts can help you both in an interview and if you are waitlisted. So again, whether it's GPA repair, more clinical exposure, community service, whatever is your weakness, other than actually the presentation of your qualifications in your application that you can fix now, that will enhance your chances of acceptance now, go for it, do it. That was number one. Number two, prepare for the interview if you are invited to interview. For most medical schools, the acceptance rate for interviewed applicants goes way up. Most are between 25 and 50% which is far better than the one to 10% acceptance rate for applicants at a whole at most schools. You are so close. Take advantage not only of the free resource I mentioned earlier, but of acceptance mock interview options. Have a dress rehearsal with an experienced supportive mentor before you have the real thing. That way you can, you can perfect your answers. You can be critiqued. For, again, from, not from somebody who was evaluating you to admit you or reject you, but from somebody who's trying to support you and help you. Again, have a dress rehearsal. Number three, 
If the school is open to updates, again, that's a big if, provide meaningful updates, but don't waste their time repeating what's in your application or merely, merely reiterating your interest. There needs to be more substance than that. You can send them information on a recent great grade, um, a publication, a new job that provided insight into your alignment with their school, new community service or leadership position, or perhaps, and this would be for the schools that are most open to updates, I would say interactions with current students that really piqued your interest, or perhaps even faculty members that, again, reinforce the idea that this is the right place for you. So that's track one trying to get accepted this cycle. Track two, simultaneously prepare to reapply. Until you get an offer of acceptance that you would be happy to accept, another offer of admission that you want to accept, and you should be happy to accept any of them, frankly. In brief, here are the steps you should be taking now to prepare for a reapplication, especially if you would like to reapply in the 2024-2025 cycle. Number one, evaluate your application holistically. You can start with the stats, right? I have a GPA of X, I have an MCAT of Y, I have Z hours of all different kinds of experience, but don't stop there. Examine school alignment. In other words, your choice. Is there a, a mission fit? Mission fit between your interests and the school strengths. Is, is, did you present your qualifications effectively? And then of course, just based on the stats, are you competitive? They do count but don't stop with the stats. I see so many posts and I get so many inquiries. I have you know, this MCAT or I have this GPA, this MCAT, X hours of this, Y hours of that. Do I qualify? Am I competitive? Well, I don't really know. I haven't seen your application. So again, holistically evaluate your application and then evaluate, address, and hopefully eliminate weaknesses in your application. Yes, that overlaps with track one very directly. So if you do the, take these steps in terms of pursuing acceptance this cycle and it, you don't do it enough or there are other issues that you also have to address, realize that you're that much farther ahead in terms of preparing for a reapplication process. If you weren't competitive at the schools you applied to, either improve your competitiveness, retake the MCAT, go for a post -bac, uh, whether formal or informal, improve the community service, improve the clinical exposure. If you're interested in research, get the research component or apply to programs where you are competitive. Don't do the same thing you did last time. And then if you believe that you failed in your presentation of your qualifications to present yourself effectively, fix your presentation. Make sure that you show connections between your activities and what you learned, what you acquired, what you contributed how you grew from those activities, how you contributed, how you changed, you, you uh, gave, made a difference, and then how those activities made a difference to you. Fix your presentation. And then five, apply as early as possible without rushing or skip a cycle so that you can apply with an improved and competitive application early in the following cycle. Again, Accepted can support you as you pursue track two, Check out Accepted's reapplication packages, which start with a critique of this year's application and provide support for your next application, or just start with a reapplication review, which will provide you with a critique of one primary application and up to two secondary applications. And I'll include links in the show notes at accepted.com slash 555 to these specific services, as well as to the full interviews with the admissions deans, which I quoted earlier. So remember, if you do not yet have an interview invitation, you are not toast, nor are your med school ambitions. But don't take this episode as an excuse to sit on your hands, because you really weren't listening to me, and wait for the interview invitation. Pursue those parallel tracks. Be prepared whether you get an invitation and be prepared for the interview, and I hope you do, or not. Be prepared in either case. And by the way, if you don't get that interview invitation, or if this cycle does not end up with the acceptance that you hope for, having already prepared yourself for a reapplication effort will make that rejection a little bit easier emotionally. So I want to thank you again, listeners, for joining me today. I want to again wish you a very happy, healthy, prosperous, successful new year. And I also want to give you a quick reminder, in addition to the services that I've mentioned in the latter part of this podcast, 
except it is also providing you with two free resources, and I invite you to take advantage of them. Number one, the ultimate guide to medical school interview success, which you can access at accepted.com slash 555IV. Again, that's accepted.com slash 555IV. And medical school reapplicant advice, six tips for success. And you can download that from accepted.com slash 555REAPP or accepted.com slash 555REAP. Thanks again for coming. This is Admission Straight Talk produced by Accepted. And I am your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week.